Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can shrink a shape in Illustrator without distorting it. So you get an exact copy of the shape, only a little bit smaller than you started off with. Now about now, you're probably wondering why we're even bothering with this tutorial because it should be really, really easy to shrink a shape. All you should need to do is to grab hold of the shape and just drag in on one of the corner handles. And if we add the shift key theoretically, we should get the exact shape. Well, that's in theory only because in practice, it just doesn't work. So let's see what the problem is. I have my shape selected. I'm going to choose Edit Copy and then edit, paste in place. So it means I have a second copy of this shape exactly on top of the original. And let's just change the fill so we can see what's going on. I'm going to make it a pale green. And now I'm going to grab this corner handle and add the shift key to it as I drag inwards. And you can already start seeing that the shape is not scaling correctly. Even if I add the alt key so I drag inwards from the middle of the shape, it's still not scaling properly. I'm just going to let go the mouse button here and let's see what the problem looks like in reality. Well, here is our top shape, which is supposed to be a scaled down version of the bottom shape, but there's nowhere that I can place this shape where it actually sits inside properly this original shape. It's just not scaling correctly at all. But let's look at this shape because this one is scaled correctly. And the way that you do this in Illustrator is really quite easy, but you can see that already we simply can't just copy and resize the shape because it just doesn't work. So let's go now and see how I created this shape that is an exact scaled down version of the original. So now we're ready to get to work. I'm going to get rid of these inner bits, one of which was awful and one of which was really good. And let's go back to our starting shape. Now this could be any shape at all. It's going to work exactly the same way. I just wanted to keep working with the shape that we started off with. Now I want a duplicate of this shape, so the easiest way is to just drag and drop it onto the new icon here. That saves me having to do Edit Copy and then Edit Paste in place. I'm going to make sure that I have the shape selected and now I'm going to recolor it or change the fill of the shape to a different color and I'm going to add a stroke to it so I can see what we're working with. So I'm going to do it orange so that we can see it a bit more clearly. And I know that I want something like a 20 point stroke. Now this is the, the point at which it gets a little bit confusing because what I want is this green middle and my stroke is aligned to the center of the shape. So the actual shape itself was a bit smaller than this. So let's just pop the shape on top. You can see that the original shape is actually a bit smaller than the shape that we're seeing here with its stroke. So the original shape is where this path is because our stroke is over the middle of it. Now at this point you've got two choices. If you're going to persevere with this stroke being centered over the edge of the shape, then let's see how we would do that. We're going to choose Object, Expand Appearance. Well, Expand, that's the only one available. They're exactly the same. Expand and Expand Appearance, there is no difference between them. So just select whichever is visible at the time. We're just going to click OK. So I am going to this new group here. You can see here that I have a stroke and a path, but let's have a look at this path because this is going to cause us a little bit of consternation. You see, if I turn all of this off, the path that I've got from the middle there is exactly the same size as the one I started off with. So effectively, I've done nothing at all, except that I can go and grab and use this stroke to do some mathematics on this path. So I'm dragged my stroke to the very top and I'm selecting it and I'm shift clicking here to select the path. And what I want to do is take the stroke away from the path. So I'm just going to click minus front. And now I get the smaller shape. So that's one way to do it. And it may or may not be the way that clicks with you. But let's have a look at the second way, which I think is a little bit more confusing, but actually a little bit easier. So let's go and grab this shape. And again, we're just going to make a duplicate of it. We're going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to add a stroke to it. I'm going to change its color so we know what we're working with. Let's make it red. Let's bump up the stroke weight to 20. And 
we're going to look at this point and say, okay, so this middle bit that we're seeing now, this red bit, is going to be the size of our final shape. But before we go into that expand appearance, what we're going to do is we're going to kick this stroke to the inside. So I'm going to choose stroke, and I'm going to choose align stroke to inside. Now at this point we ignore this shape because this is smaller than we're going to end up with. And this is where it gets confusing because what you're seeing on the screen right now is not what you're going to end up with. What you saw a minute ago is what you're going to end up with. So with this shape selected, now I'm going to choose Object Expand Appearance. And now when I open this up and turn my stroke off, I'll find that I have a shape which is larger than this red portion visually is on the screen. It's actually the bit that I saw originally. I don't know why Illustrator works this way. I just know that this is a solution that we've got. So I'm going to click on this stroke and just remove it because we don't need it. And this path is inside a group. And it's the only thing there. We don't need it there. So we're just going to move it out. And so this is what we've done. We've been able to create successively smaller size shapes by harnessing the power of the stroke for that shape. Now, what if we wanted to go bigger? So let's get rid of or hide these two. Let's take our original path up to the top here and let's go and make a duplicate of it. And now let's go and add a stroke to it. So we're actually going to select this and give it a different color. So this time it's going to be a sort of purple color and the stroke is going to be orange and it's going to be 20. And we can do it on the outside or the center, but let's go with the same pattern as we were using and let's align this stroke to the outside. And now let's go and expand this shape. Object, expand appearance. And let's see what we've got when I turn my stroke off. Let's move the original path up above. And what we've managed to do this time is to create a path that is just a bit larger than the original. So we didn't have to go to the Pathfinder palette, but you know if you get caught and your paths are not the right size, then just grab the stroke and the original path and click Unite, and then you'll just have the bigger shape. So I don't want this stroke anymore, and I can just pull my path out of the group because it doesn't need to be there. And let's go and get these others. And because they're smaller versions, they'll need to be on top in the Layers palette or we won't be able to see them. So there we have a proven method of contracting and expanding shapes in Illustrator. We just need to be aware that sometimes the bit that we're seeing in the middle is not going to be the exact size of the final shape that we're going to get. And we also need to be aware that we might need to do some fancy footwork using either Unite or Minus Front in the Pathfinder palette to get the shape that we want. But in contrast to what we did earlier, this time we do have nice little nested shapes. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications, including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.